Hey guys, welcome back to Escapement and Watch. I'm your host, Falling Titan. And today we're going to talk about water resistance tests, water pressure. When you model watch, how do you make sure it's waterproof? Now, the watch has a gasket for the crystal, which you do not lubricate, three gaskets for this crown, which you do lubricate with silicone grease, and there's a gasket under here, which you do lubricate with silicone grease. So those are the three entry points for water. Now you can make this kit, which I made, to test water. This was one of my first ones. This can handle 250 PSI. This gauge is only for 100, but you can always uh, spin it out and swap one in. Very easy if you wanna put more pressure. This is a release valve, it's built in, so it's very good. And then here is how you get the air in. It's just like a basic bike pump. You can see I put a lot of Teflon tape Keep it all sealed nice, no leaking. When you open it, it's very heavy duty guys, very heavy duty. And when they test these, they usually can handle double than what they are rated at. So I'm thinking this thick thing can handle 500 PSI. This is just a, what's it called? A coat hanger. I just cut it and bent it into shape. This is gonna hold the watch like so just use a spring bar and some tape and let it so that, so it stays suspended in air as you pressurize the cabin and there's a rubber gasket you want to lubricate that with silicone grease make sure it doesn't dry out so you what you do is you fill the water up to let's say here and then your watch is going to be oops going to be hanging up here so not inside the water then you close it up nice and tight open this start pumping air in until this is at maximum or whatever pressure you want it so this right here will test for about 60 to 80 psi depending how much you push in afterwards sorry not psi uh, meters uh, so this is 100 PSI, which is, I think, about 60, 66 meters of water depth. So if I put a different gauge on this one, it will test to deeper because this, again, can handle a lot more. But even when it's full, you can just keep pumping in more. Um, once it's full, each pump puts exponentially the pressure higher. So be careful. Don't get those automatic ones that, like take a, a compressor's hose and pump in air because that could be dangerous. You could pump in air too fast and this could blow and hurt you. So go the old school way with it, like a normal pump. So now we have the water in here and the watch suspended and we have it pressurized. We wait for 30 minutes minimum. Now the time does matter. You got to let it get pressurize the watch and the water. Then after 30 minutes, you make sure the valve is in the air. Because if you tip this way, the water is gonna go into the valve, you can't release the air, and then water will just spill all over you. So tip it this way, let the uh, watch go underneath the water, and then release the pressure. Slowly, and then if you see a stream of bubbles, you can check where the leak is happening and then you can correct it now you might get a bubble from this little caveat in here and here and here and here you might get all six of them one 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 or two bubbles but that's just the ones that were trapped in this little hole but if you don't see like a stream coming from like the middle like then you know it's good same as the crown so don't be fooled and I like to take off the bezel because sometimes you get air trapped underneath the bezel, which, you know, that could trick you and make you think the crystal is leaking. So I like it empty there when I do the tests on all the mods. 
And that's basically it. Now, some people say you should release the air while the watch is still suspended in air, then immediately drop it in the water and see uh, any if any bubbles are there. I like to do it the other way where I put the watch in the water first and then release the air because it just makes a bit more sense to me. I feel like the while it's pressurizing, if if there is a hole, air would escape the case if air got into the case when it was initially pressurized. But if I release the pressure while it's above the water, which some people say is the correct way, then there shouldn't be any more pressure in the case to release in the water, so I won't see the bubbles anyways. I don't know. Let me know in the comments, guys, if I'm thinking correctly on this, but this is just a homemade kit, so it'll save you a bit of money. I believe it only cost me $30 to put this together. You can make bigger ones, more advanced ones, more for more depth. Um, I'll leave some links in the description below if you want to make your own homemade water pressure tester if you're a modder. It's very fun, very easy, and very affordable. And that way you can get some peace of mind that your watch is waterproof. Now, even with just this tester, I pump it up to 100 and then even a bit more, like five or six more pumps. I know I'm at about 150 PSI. That's around 100 meters. If it passes 100 meters, guys, it's going to it's gonna pass 200. Like, that's for sure. Wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Seiko SKX Blue Lagoon mod. Damn, beautiful. All right, guys, going to call that one a video. Hope you enjoyed this. It's a little bit different. And uh, yeah, check out the links and make your own, make your own water pressure tester. See you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.